Hi, I'm Michael. I'm the developer of Loopy Pro and in this video series we're looking at a range of Loopy Pro features and answering questions that come in. Looping is one of those things that's different for everybody and if you're coming into this for the first time without having done looping before, there's a bit of a learning curve to climb. I want to show you a number of techniques for getting a good tight first loop in Loopy Pro as well as show you a number of options for recording later loops. The key to getting a good first loop in Loopy Pro is to begin and end recording on time, that is on the beat rather than a little bit before or a little bit after. That is of course easier said than done and it can take a little bit of practice. One of the things to know if you're interacting with the screen on Loopy Pro rather than using a MIDI controller is that Loopy Pro's clips respond to release rather than press. The reason for that is that, well there are two. The first is that sweaty fingers do not work very well with touch screens so if you're ever in a studio performance on stage kind of environment and it's warm and your fingers are just a little bit moist screens do not respond well on touch but on release they're quite reliable. The other reason is that you don't want to be kind of staring at the screen waiting for the moment when you need to press. If you put your finger down first you can then look away maybe interact with the audience if you're performing and then just let go when you're ready. So if you press to begin and press to end a recording you'll find the timing is actually a little bit out because Loopy is listening for the release. So the trick is to put your finger down, release when you're ready to record and then put your finger down just before you're ready to end and release when you're finished. Like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. And you'll notice if I do it a bit out of time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, it just doesn't sound right. So if you make a mistake with your first loop, you can delete it and go again, or you can use Loopy Pro's trim features to trim it down to the right points. Your first loop will show a little waveform symbol at the top left. You can tap that, one, two, three, four, and drag the endpoints to one, get it right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You'll notice one, that in that two, screen, three. you can see little bar markers, which can help you get everything lined up. Now if you're using your hands to play an instrument like a guitar or something then obviously tapping precisely at the beginning and the end of your loop is going to be quite difficult to do. There are a few solutions to that. One of them that's particular to Loopy Pro is auto loop detection. You can find that in the clip settings near the bottom of the screen in the recording section. With auto loop detection you can begin and end recording kind of any time you like and Loopy will just figure out what the tight loop is. For example. <laughs> Loopy tends to get it right, especially with rhythmic loops, but if it gets it wrong you'll see the waveform uh, icon at the top left now gives you a range of selections and those are loops that Loopy Pro thinks it might have been. You can pick one and see how it sounds or you can trim manually. One cool feature with auto loop detection is that you can tell Loopy to automatically stop recording and begin playing the loop. If you go into clip settings and turn on auto end detected loop which is just below auto loop detection and then you set a length in bars for what your first loop is going to be let's just say one bar then loopy will listen closely to what you play and will automatically end the loop on time like this that can be really useful for getting a nice musical beginning to a session without having to actually touch the screen on time you can also tell Loopy Pro to wait until it hears audio before beginning recording your first loop. If I open clip settings and scroll down, I can turn on loop audio threshold recording here and it's going to wait until the sound reaches above the audio threshold that I set before it begins recording. For example, one, two, three, four. That can be useful if you don't have any hands free to begin the loop but you do at the end. If you'd prefer to set a tempo in advance and have Loopy begin and end recording for you, you can do that too with the metronome. Of course it's recommended that you have the metronome going in your ear and not going out to the house speakers, but Loopy can do that. You can specify where you want to send the metronome audio. In that case all you need to do is set a tempo in advance and then turn on the metronome there and it will begin counting you in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and it will automatically end the recording after the length that you specify. You can change the length here in the clock controls to whatever you like. And of course if you've got a foot pedal you can control everything from there via MIDI Learn. 
Now once you've got the first loop set up, there are a number of ways to set up Loopy Pro to record later loops. By default, Loopy Pro is going to begin and end recording according to the length that you set in the clock controls up here. So if we set it to two bars, it's going to count us in to the next boundary. It's going to record for two bars and then it will stop automatically. You can change the number of bars it's going to record for up here and you can change that for each new loop so that all the loops can have different lengths from each other. But that's only one of the modes that loop is capable of. If you open clip settings and scroll down to recording, you can see all of the different ways that you can record loops. So auto count out is the feature I just described. If you turn that off, then Loopy will begin recording and will continue recording until you tap it. So you can choose how long you want that recording to go for on the fly. So when I tap a loop, it's going to begin recording at the next boundary of whatever length I've set it to. And then it will just keep on recording indefinitely until I tap it. When I tap, it's going to wait until the next musically appropriate endpoint and then begin playing the loop again. You can also change the count in and count out quantization settings. That's the amount of time that Loopy Pro will wait to begin recording or end recording after you tap. In the extreme case, you can set it to zero, none and none. And then Loopy will begin whenever you tap it and end whenever you tap. And then it will automatically quantize that loop to the closest bar, etc. And so you can set it to any duration you like. Another great feature of Loopy Pro is retrospective recording. That means that Loopy will listen all the time and if you play something that you like, you can tap it after the fact and Loopy will lock it in. Open up clip settings again and right at the top of recording is retrospective recording. If we turn that on and we set a tempo and a bar length and begin playback, I can just noodle away until I play something that I enjoy and then tap and it will lock in what I played. There's one more cool thing which I wanted to show you, which is combining pre-recorded loops with live looping. Once you've got a session in Loopy Pro set up with existing loops, you can reset the clock by tapping the clock controls and hitting reset. Then Loopy is going to wait until the next loop that you record and it will automatically time stretch all your existing loops to match the new tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. That lets you combine the best of having samples with live looping. Right, that's it for today. I hope some of that was useful. More soon.